The King resumes negotiations with Wat Tyler in Smithfield, where he repeats his promises. The rebels aren't buying it. They doubt the monarch's sincerity. Hasn't he tried twice to escape? But the king assures them that all their demands will be met. He's wearing a small blue cap, a gold tunic, and sporting handsome flowing locks. The king is little more than a child. Tyler hesitates. His comrades want guarantees. The barons flanking the king are hostile. The atmosphere is tense, the horses skittish. Suddenly, some troublemakers insult Tyler and try to knock him down. His horse swerves, a soldier pulls a dagger, and all hell breaks loose. A man is wounded, his leg spurts blood. Horses turn about, foaming, people jostle one another. Stones fly, faces are bathed in sunlight. A cloud passes, and suddenly, William Woolworth, the Lord Mayor, jabs his sword and injures Wat Tyler. Tyler's chest is soaked in red, a terrible red. His eyes roll back. Time creeps forward in its tortoise shell. He falls from his horse, breaks his hip, his armor clanks. Everything explodes in a great commotion. Shouts, bodies trample, the horseman falls, then another. Then a rider comes up to Tyler, who is prostrate on the ground. They look at each other. All the kings of the earth whisper their simian breath into the rider's ear. Eternity tries to close the locks, but the gate is open and the rider finishes them off. Wat Tyler lies on the ground, disemboweled. Then everything speeds up even more. The king pushes the rebels back and speaks out. He embraces their cause and assures them of his support. They have nothing to fear, he swears it. But they must disperse immediately. Fear and disorder do the rest. This huge crowd, come to London to fight, is suddenly overcome by a great, overpowering sadness. They no longer know who to listen to and they disband. They head away from London in small groups, dreading the worst, dubious of the king's promises, not knowing what to do next. One of the king's captains, Robert Knowles, is lying in wait outside the city. With his men, he swoops down on the rebels and slaughters them. And the reprisals are only beginning. The king himself leaves for Kent at the head of his regiment. Armed bands crisscross the countryside, tracking the now dispersed insurgents, hunting them down like animals. Many thousands of peasants are executed on the spot. The king revokes all his concessions. The repression is cold intractable, and lasts nearly two months. John Ball is finally arrested and immediately hanged and courted. There is no more talk of repealing the poll tax, and serfdom will not be abolished for another 200 years. <laughs>